Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today our battle moves away from Sterling's plantation at Point Coopie Parish in Louisiana to Cherokee County in the Kansas Territory for the Battle of Baxter Springs, or more accurately known as the Baxter Springs Massacre, on October 6, 1863. In a follow-up to the infamous massacre at Lawrence, Kansas, William Quantrill, a war criminal, led his Quantrill's raiders south through Kansas and followed the Texas road on its way to the wintering quarters in Texas. With him were 400 mounted terrorists and William Bloody Bill Anderson. His opponents and victims included were First Lieutenant James B. Pond and Major General James G. Blunt. Pond was leading members of the 2nd Kansas Colored Infantry and additional supporting white soldiers, while Blunt was leading a detachment of soldiers coming to the fort. During Quantrill's journey to his wintering quarters, they came across a detachment of African-American soldiers from the 2nd Kansas Colored Infantry under the command of 1st Lieutenant James B. Pond. Vastly outnumbered, Pond held his men together and withdrew to the only available protection, Fort Baxter, also known as Fort Blair, a small fort designated to act against any local population unrest. At the fort was the rest of Pond's detachment and some local white soldiers who were assigned to garrison duty. Pond held off Quantrill bravely, denying the terrorist group any access to the inside of the fort, eventually pushing them back. For the battle, Pond received the Medal of Honor for leading the defense with the following description. For extraordinary heroism on the 6th of October 1863, while serving with Company C, 3rd Wisconsin Cavalry, in action at Baxter Springs, Kansas, while in command of two companies of cavalry, First Lieutenant Pond was surprised and attacked by several times his own number of guerrillas, but gallantly rallied his men. And after a severe struggle drove the enemy outside the fortifications, First Lieutenant Pond then went outside the works and alone and unaided fired a howitzer three times, throwing the enemy into confusion and causing him to retire. Feeling the sting of defeat by a smaller force at Quantrill considered inferior for other reasons, Quantrill's raiders moved away from the fort accidentally coming across Major General James G. Blunt and his detachment of 100 men. Blunt was taking a newly acquired mountain howitzer to Fort Baxter. It should be noted that at some point Quantrill's raiders had dressed up as Union soldiers, thus when General Blunt saw them he believed they were part of the detachment at the fort itself and so approached them without caution. Quantrill used the surprise to get close and attack Blunt and his men, ending the struggle very quickly. Most of the detachment was killed and sadly most of those killed had attempted to surrender but Quantrill executed every single one, including members of a military band, Major Henry Z. Curtis, the son of Major General Samuel R. Curtis, and Johnny Fry, the first recorded official westbound rider of the Pony Express, along with James R. O'Neill, an artist and correspondent for Leslie's Weekly. Very few soldiers were able to escape, but surprising no one, Major General Blunt was among them. The resulting casualties were very lopsided, with Quantrill only losing two of his men and two others wounded, while the Union forces suffered from 103 dead, 18 wounded, and this included 10 civilians. After the battle, Blunt was fired for failing to keep his men safe and was then reappointed shortly thereafter. Meanwhile, the Union reinforced Baxter for the rest of the year, then pulled back to Fort Scott and demolished Fort Baxter. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.